Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's regular scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. Today is February 4th, Monday, uh, 2019. Let's call to order. Ooh, we got a new clock up there. Uh -oh. um, it's got a Massachusetts thing on it. No, I that's know. a date. I get, I would, I'm assuming that it's correct, so I want to say we're called to order at uh, 636. Um, first up, we have George Emery, who's a highway superintendent. And George is going to talk about his budget. George, take it away. Yeah, pretty much the budget's pretty much level funded. Maybe a few, there's a few uh, increases in here just for <clears throat> possible increases on you know, vehicle fixtures and price increases on fuel and stuff like that. So the highway garage line items uh, we're carrying over the same same amount, eighty-seven fifty for that. The tree warden expense, uh, bumped that up by, by, by $500. The price of that's gone up a little bit this year. So I'm expecting next year it's probably going to raise a little bit. Um, highway super wages. We put in a 3% raise just for budgetary numbers, but you know that obviously that's going to change once we have our personnel committee meetings and stuff like that. So same with the secretary wages and the labor wages. Seasonal wages, I'm asking for an extra thousand. Um, those wages help me in the summertime when the summer help, help starts. And they, they get a lot of extra stuff done that we really don't have time to do. So. Um, that'll give them a little bit more hours I can use them for so that's why I bumped that up a little bit labor wages I think that or the overtime wages I don't know why we bumped it 39 39 dollars but I think I just rounded it off to make it an even 1600 you can't ask for 39 bucks you might as well not ask for <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> um, the department expense, we, we went up almost 5000 on that just for for uh, cost of increases on you know, parts and, and repairs on trucks and shop supplies and any, any supplies that we need for rebuilding catch basins and anything that we do. Okay. Uh, machinery expense, you know, that's for parts and, and uh, inspections vehicles fuel expense we went up another 500 for a you know, fuel increase that's been fluctuating every year up and down a little bit here and there so some years we make out some years we we struggle a little bit but for the most part we've been pretty good snow and ice wages I kept that the same because we increased it last year so I wasn't 100 percent sure because I didn't have a chance to talk to you guys to see if you wanted to raise that up a little bit this year or not so That's about it. Any questions? Scott, any questions, David? Not on the general budget, no. Okay, Scotty? Uh, George, you mentioned in the um, department expenses side basins, right? Storm basins? Yep. So I, I, know, I know this rolling equipment is an important piece of the element <clears throat> of the um, of the um, expense side, but on these basins, there was a there was a, a program or an initiative. Yes, there still is. We, we use that, so we kind of most of the basins come out of you know if it's something simple, we'll take it out of the general fund basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know if it's a major repair, we take it. Yeah. We take it out of that basin fund that we have. So how many this past year, and what, how it, how are they doing in general? People drive over them and go, oh. Clunk. What is yeah, that? Most of them are doing pretty good. There's a few of them um, coming up down on on South Main Street mm -hmm. that we're gonna when we because we're gonna redo that section of road yep. um, this summer, so we'll probably end up lowering them and then re-raising them. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that'll that'll be uh, so that the top top half the top doesn't? two or three half feet horses, will, yep. will be fixed and raised up, so it'll be back to level and okay. stuff like that. But for the most part, most of our basins through town are, are in pretty good shape. Um, there's a few more that we have to do this summer yeah. 
like a, the two or three feet at the top. You yep. know, we have to take them out. We did a couple in the library this summer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we did, I think there's two more somewhere we did. Um, then we got a big cross pipe on Russell Street that we got to fix. Right. This summer, we didn't get a chance to do it this summer because the water levels were so high. Yeah, right. We didn't, and we couldn't get into the brook. Yeah, it makes no, no sense. High, so yep. we're hoping this spring, midsummer, we can finish that project. Mm -hmm. and so that's where some of that money will come from right. for that project. Do you have an estimate of uh, how long that could hold out before it gets? That culvert? Uh, yeah, just in case, like, if, I mean, it seems like we've had so much incredibly high rains so yeah. far in the fall. And, winter I mean the east side of it is the part in. that's kind of collapsed the, the entry of it collapsed a little bit on that Mo the rest of it's in decent shape um, but we've been keeping an eye on it and fixing fixing the shoulder a little bit so it doesn't collapse but it hasn't moved in all summer with all the water so concrete or is that it's that an old gallons? old uh, steel mm. okay that's one right at the curve right right the curve. Curve. yeah, yeah, yeah. the two yeah. ones yep. the barrels yep. are Interesting. I already got the pipe and everything, but we just—it's just too wet. I yeah, mean, we got to <laughs> yeah, we got to get some drier weather for that. So, right, right, right. makes perfect sense. Um, Mr. Chair, maybe an open discussion about snow and ice wages and snow and ice expense. We have it was last year we ticked them up. Three years ago we ticked them up a little bit, yep. and we're allowed to uh, deficit spend. If that's if that's the case, then in this current year, we hold off. I could see pressure to add to the base budget a little bit next year, and that gives us basically every other year adding incrementally, in particular to the materials piece, because that's one you can count on, um, not necessarily in volume, but but price per pound, price per yard, price per ton, whatever. However, it ends up being up, right. being increased, but. I appreciate uh, Highway Superintendent bringing forward a, a no request increase this year, knowing that we increased it last year. So, so Sherry, can can we start? Can we work? Can you work with the uh, the treasurer account? It would probably be the treasurer, and start putting a line. Not not so much that we're going to figure it into the budget, mm -hmm. but identify the costs for health benefits. To that oh, department. Do, oh, to each department. By department. By department. By department. Uh -huh. Again, not not. It, it just. I I think you know we we have we should have an idea of where. Sometimes we don't think about that. Rather than just having a giant bucket for expense. It, like it's that. just a, it's just a line item. Right. You know. You don't get to see the actual associated cost. Right. It's clearly. Yep. Um, also, George, were you able to, um, one of our meetings, we're talking about ditches. There was talk about a culvert that goes underneath 116. Were you able to investigate that a little bit further? I have not had a chance to do that yet. I will make myself a note because I got to go. That's, okay. We'll have to go through the state guys to, to find out about that. Yeah, because I could. And that's exactly where I was going to go. Is, is that something that we need to talk to uh, District 2 about? That was over by Garage, or garage yeah. Or right? Yeah. Kind of over by, uh, by well, Jinx, Jinx yeah. and North Star. Mm -hmm. This side of the school. Yeah. yeah. This side of the school. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, Okay. So under, if I could, Mr. Chair. So George, under Garage Energy, right? Mm -hmm. I know. I know we uh, allocate for uh, PV for electricity costs, and then we also buy for uh, bulk for fuel oil. Is that why that continues to read as a zero? Yeah, I combined it, the two the two budgets. I just haven't broken them down yep. in the last couple of years. Yep. So the, yep. it's just so the again, the town out. the town pays globally. We we contract globally for our fuel oil. Mm -hmm. And then the PV pays for uh, the PV generates enough electricity to offset the expenses at 
So someone looking at this detailed budget would go, well, wait a minute, you guys aren't using any energy. What is that? Right. Well, it's really a zero. But when I do, it shows up in other parts of the When budget. I do the, the, the warrant and stuff like that, I will break it down. If yeah. It, if it's heat, heating yep. oil and stuff like that, yeah. I break it down. Yeah. To, on to on the different. warrants, but on this yep. line, on this line right here, we're, we're covering it somewhere else. Yep. Thank you. One of the things, George, we were looking at also last year was rework on uh, South Main Street. Are you thinking of going back, looking at it this year? Yes, I'm hoping this spring, somewhere in uh, uh, May or, or June, grinding up South Main Street to where we finished paving this year. Okay. Um, and redoing all those basins. Uh, are, you, are you thinking about going down? I haven't decided yet. Okay. I mean, if we go down, it's not. I don't think we can go down. The four enough. inches. I don't think we can go down four inches. I think, the, from what I discovered and and learned over the process of what they did the last time they overlaid it, yeah, yeah. they only went up about an inch and a half on the overlay. Okay. Maybe maybe two inches at the most. So if I went down two inches, you know, only put down an inch and a half. That's only gaining us a half an inch. I mean, if I go down four inches and put back two inches. I'm not sure there's enough blacktop there, so I'll have to cut into the blacktop to make sure. Is that, is that predicated on the quality of the, the total base layer? I mean, there's there's issues about you know water runoff and all that stuff, pitch and, right. and get all that. But as far as road construction goes, if you if you wiped out four inches and found it was good, you just have to. I mean, if you wiped out four inches and it comes down, you're almost at a, the dirt. Yeah, you basically have to just put a binder, a Got binder it. coat down, and then yeah. the top coat on top of that. Um, but you don't know what's under there yet, right? Not all the way down, no. Because I found the old, I found the old curb. Basically, you the did old, find the curb. Probably yeah, the old there. curb is in front, right, in, right behind the new curb, mm -hmm. and it's and it's only, like I said, it's only down about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, in most places. I've checked like three or four different mm -hmm. places throughout the road, and that's what I that's what I came up came up with, and I could find the old base layer of the old blacktop mm -hmm. compared to what the new blacktop is. So. It's not like they brought it up, you know, three or four inches. I think over time the driveways have settled. Yeah, right. The roads, you know. Well, there's no actually. crown. There's no crown in the driveways. No, most of the driveways. There's a don't lot have of a There's a lot of big bellies in 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 some in most of the driveways and stuff like that. So I mean, generally most of the people down through there have been paving and raising that section up just to get the water to stay back on the street. But I will mill out extra. But I'm afraid if I mill out too much extra, the lips on the driveways will be too tall. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get people complaining that the edge of their lips of the driveway yep. are too tall yep. and their plows are catching them. Yep. So you've got to try to figure that that out. What do you, what do you have for um, what do you have for for drainage along through there? Just, is, is everything come to the road? Everything comes to the road to the catch basins. There's a few catch basins in the grass area. Uh, yeah. Periodically along through both sides. Um, it seems like most most of your standing water sometimes sits on the west side of it. So it seems to be worse on the west. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you keep us informed about that, George. Thank you. Kelly, you guys, have any more questions? I think. I think only a small thing I had come up with on that was on the uh, capital quest for the. Uh, container. I just wasn't sure if there was um, was there another comparison as far as a a different used one or is it? I mean, there's, there's, I, I yeah. gave two of them. There's one in here that's that's a used quote. That's the one for fifty two fifty. Yeah. And then the other one for the sixty eight hundred is the brand new one. Yeah. I imagine. The only, the only reason I'm thinking of this of getting a container is to put some of our small equipment in it to get it up out of the weather so it doesn't mm -hmm. sit in the weather all year and it's easier to get to. 5250 for a price? Yeah. Um, oh. Either that or I was thinking maybe. What's that? I you know, you know, it's a 40 foot trailer thank you yeah it's a 40 footer 40 it's footer. basically I, one of the shipping version. containers yeah. Yeah. it's yeah, a high cube one. they call it yeah. so you mm -hmm. can drive we'll be able to drive our whacker i made sure it was tall enough so we could drive yeah, the whacker right. right into it yeah. mm -hmm. so. 
Okay. So, um, um, I may have I may have some pricing for you also. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, so we're starting to run out of room with stuff, so I'm trying to find spots to stuff everything in. Along along the lines of the container, if I could, Mr. Chair. Sure. Are there any um, considerations given to its site location and proximity inside either the the, the the floodplain with respect to the conservation commission or the fire department or what kind of storage you're going to have in there or who, who else do we check with other than just getting a 40-foot container and having it show up one day not sure ask a couple questions yeah, I think we'll make before out. before we get named on it yep the inside well it's an outside container of 40 feet you're going to store stuff in it the question yeah. is what kind of stuff most of the stuff that would be staring at i was thinking of, of making some shelving in there for all our street signs mm -hmm. getting those out of the shop yep. so we have that that out of the room street signs will be put in there um we'll be putting like our whacker plow yep. broom yep all that stuff accessory stuff yeah yep. accessory stuff basically it's no no hazard stuff would be stored out there yep. or any of that stuff and along that line, if I could, uh, Cherry, to just check with Maya about that Auxil okay. auxiliary storage. We have to. Yeah. Right. Kind of we insure we insure it in a building, but yeah. you never right. know. They yeah, might we, walk we'll down. Find out. Right. We'll do all our. Uh, oh, that's not covered. Right. That's <laughs> not covered. That. It's yeah. the same that's thing, but it's a new box. It's right. Like, oh, great. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, I think Kurt could. Might just have to fill out the little the form for the contract. You know, the town of Shootsbury has done, they did one of those Quonset hut type things. Yep. They, you know, yeah. build it with blocks and they raised it up a little bit. So, I mean, that's a thought too, doing one of those. Mm -hmm. Those aren't too pricey and they're, you can get decent size ones right. for it. You can store a lot of stuff in them. So. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I want to eventually try to get the sanders undercover for, mm -hmm. the wind, you know, for the summertime and stuff like that so they're not sitting out in the rain getting getting rusted up all the time. So. Makes sense. Yeah. You, know, you get a lot. You get a lot of invested. You should keep them. Yeah, we're trying to keep them as nice as we can for as long as we can. Yeah. That's for sure. Understood, George. Okay. Scott, anything, David, on the uh, capital? On the capital, Mr. Chair, if we could carry over this. This is the second request for a, a two-post vehicle lift. And last year, we talked about uh, the impact of uh, having a vehicle lift in in the garage. What our uh, liability could possibly be with respect to the Maya piece, but also what does it mean for um, the kinds of work being done down at the highway garage? And I don't think those questions, they, they came out of the Capital Committee to come forward to the Board of Selectmen as well as to the Town Administrator. You know, is this something new that we're doing down there? Or uh, what are the what 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 is it something new we're doing down there? A. Or B. What are the, what are the tangentials about having a, a vehicle lift down at the mm -hmm. at the garage now we don't have it in the ground it's not an oil hydraulic job i totally understand that but the question becomes what does this mean in the longer in the longer scheme of things so i appreciate george's request the highway super's request for it but those questions are yet as of as of now still unanswered okay so we need some more information from sherry i mean and george i think so okay all right. All set, George. We got a dump truck in here too. Not yeah. this year. I know. I, just, that, that <laughs> I was giving I was giving George a head start. <laughs> now, these are just future future right. ones that I put in, so you guys will know that eventually. It's coming. Yep. Totally get it. it. Does this happen to coincide with the uh, retiring of the debt of the one we have currently? Uh, I believe it will be. Uh, Again, the debt. Stable debt schedule is an important piece in capital planning. Every five years, right? you were trying to do you kind of make sure that you you wind one down before you assume another one. Right. Yep. So it would either be a single axle or a loader. Mm -hmm. Whatever is going to come first. Um, obviously, loader is a pretty important piece in our fleet right now. Right, right. Uh, that's all we have for loading trucks and. How's it, hold, dirt how's it holding up? We did a trans it's, it's doing all right. You can tell it's losing a little bit of power and yeah. stuff in, in the motor, but it's it's doing good. It's getting up there in hours. I think we're approaching seven thousand hours on it. Okay. So. 
Yeah. Doesn't need tires this year. Not this year. Not this year. No. no. People so fall good. over and they go, how much for those tires? <laughs> tires. No, those, are real, those are real tires. Yeah, they're about 10 grand for right. about four of them, so they're not cheap. And the, and the rebuild that we did a year ago on that, it's holding up just fine, that was on the drivetrain. That was yeah, on that the was transmission. That was transmission. Like, a couple I years think ago. that was like four, maybe five years ago. It's always last year when it's a budget cycle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's doing good. The tranny's doing good, so we're, it's, it's been holding up. It's good. Good. Thank you. The estimate for the loader is 200000 Yeah, the estimate, they gave me like some budgetary estimates. Uh, they say a loader nowadays is about 200 single axle dump truck. If you need like sander and all that, all that stuff, it's about 220. Mm -hmm. They said they've gone up tremendously this this past year. So, so is one you're looking at replacing? Is that the one that we we bought used? That's the used one. Yeah. That was a good, it's that either, was a good it's deal either gonna be that one or the, the <clears throat> freight liner that we mm -hmm. have. That one. that one seems like we have more problems with than we just the right huh. purchase. Oh, really. Things. I, I was confused on that. I had some Might be duplicate on mine as well. One of those two. It depends on, on that year when we yeah. go to get a truck, which one it's going to be. Yeah, kind of yeah, take, take the temperament of which one's acting up the most. Yeah. yeah I that's just that'll sure that'll sure come down to the, to that, to the wire and yeah. decide. Yeah, okay, it's time to buy one. Which one are we going to use? Okay, George. No, one point two. We're talking about like one of the pothole repair thing machines. Yeah, I'm in a processor right now, trying to. Uh, I got to finish doing some paperwork, send it to the state. Yeah. They got to uh, accept it, and then. Mm -hmm. they, they might just accept it. That would be a good yeah. ad, given how many the road. We we the borrowed deer, been tough. We borrowed deer fields a lot last year, so just I think yeah. it would be a great. They can afford it. Asset, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kevin's been pretty well, pretty good to us over That's there. Wonderful. So. I think it's going to be a, a rough winter, judging by the ones that are already open yeah. out there. Yeah. Plus, this weather doesn't help with these intense okay. freeze thaw cycles. That's a okay. Point two. And the only other one is uh, the mower. We're trying to figure out what to do with that because the, the mower we have that goes on the holder, the holder's very tired and we're limited yeah. through the summer this year. And are you going to buy an uh, attachment for the whacker? I've looked, I, mean, I gotta finish looking into that. The guy was supposed to give me some information on it. He says they have one, but they don't, he doesn't know if they have a, uh, a regular rotary mm -hmm. mower for it, like a finished mower um, for what we mow out back and around the building and stuff like that. And around the yeah. Yeah. So we're have one somewhere. We have to look into that a little bit more to see if I can get just that attachment right. for it. Did you submit a request for a mower? Or do we look at maybe yeah. adding that to the same one for last year. It's about 13 grand. Okay. But that's Could for a zero turn. Let's take a look at this second. I didn't get an estimate on it yet because they haven't sent it back to me. So. Yeah. Well, again, if I could, Mr. Chair, circling back to last year's capital planning committee discussion, the question about a motor mower was, are we going to assume more responsibility with a new piece of equipment? Um, right now, it's, it's contracted services for a great deal of the towns. Um, I know we mowing. talked about maybe getting us a maintenance type person mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that and adding that to that. So I think that's still in discussion. So you would too, offset so. contracted service right. and you would have right. it in house, <clears throat> now, particularly in the seasonal wages that make might make some sense. But remember, the vast majority of the town's property is contracted out already. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I was wondering. Like, do we, you know, do we look at like adding that to the contract list or the other? Way? You know, we got to well, look at both yeah, sides the pen of pendulum it. swung one way twenty years ago, right? Right. Right. And so the pendulum now is: are, are we exploring the pendulum moving back toward it being a town-provided service right. that's paid for by the taxpayers and executed through capital and expenses on the operating budget, or do we keep it a contracted services? I don't have a particular opinion about it. Yeah. I do, but well, well, oh, I do because I know. I know in the springtime who complains. I mean, I think every, I mean, with the school complains, the athletics, or, you yeah, know, the, the rec committee complained, we complained, mm -hmm. the uh, veterans memorial thing complained, um, the only one that doesn't complain is the cemetery. No, we complain too. <laughs> you, just, uh, you just don't hear about it. Yeah. Okay, so, so and, and that's, be, that, that's because of the, that's how you have to structure a bid, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, so, so if, if someone can, now, I know there's a lot of cost too that that normally is not 
recognized in, in maintaining lawns, like in mm -hmm. like tremors and tremor yeah, lines and, and, stuff. Yep. and, yeah. and, and equipment gas use, equipment and, and hours, expenses. Who, yep. who sharpens the who sharpens the, the blades? The blade. and, and and those are big. Those are huge things. Right. You know, so you, you have to look. And, and if you hire someone, then then Some stuff you look. Well, yeah. if you hire someone, you're going to have to have the person should have a CDL, right? They're yeah. probably be probably driving trucks to plow, and you, you that you person probably needs a, to plow snow, and he also probably needs a hoisting license, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so and that because mm -hmm. you have to have now they make you have a hoisting license for doing anything, yeah. You you know, so you have to have a hoisting license. So you, you just add you start so all of a sudden you're not you're not hiring somebody at Ten dollars an hour. You're hiring somebody at seventeen, eighteen dollars an hour, mm -hmm. and 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 he has to. And, that, and it's and you don't think about lawn, but somebody has to be pretty skilled. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of little things. So there is. But could you have that? Per, could you have? And, and as we know, what what is, what happened in the springtime? You have a lot of mowing that gets mm -hmm. done. You you're, you that person probably is mowing twenty four every day of the week. Yeah. But as the summer rolls on, sure. that goes down, and all of a sudden now you bring that person doing catch basin and, and other types of work. So depending on what size mower you get, I think you probably do it everything in two days. I bet one person. The town, really? Probably. The schools, and everything. Depending on what size mower you get. I mean, if you yeah, if you're doing with a 61 inch mower, these guys do it with two mowers, and I think it takes them a day and a half, maybe two days. So something like that. The guys that are doing it. Now, how much did you spend last year on the contracted services? About Ten thousand. I just put it out to bid again, so I'll have new numbers the end of the month. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks, George. Okay. Anything else? No, no. Thanks, George. No, no, that's thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. I think I'm, I think we're all set. Yeah. All, all right. Thank you, George. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. You too. Anything else? No. We'll be all set. All right. Um, just that we, we're going to talk about. I think that's it. The budget stuff, right? Yeah. No more budget stuff. Do you want to review the revenue numbers? Yeah, I think actually ago? it would make sense. We just started getting compiling the revenue numbers and okay. we give, we give Sherry yeah. credit for that. You know, it's we're moving into February and the reality is it's important to know what, what we're talking about. We haven't got a, a gap analysis quite yet, but you said that's a couple of years of trend line for uh, local receipts as well as tax and we incorporated there has been incorporated the override from a year ago as well and so we're effectively starting out you know 200,000 ish right now uh, a total of a total of 8.257 million after the initial governor's response so when we finally roll up the expense requests. We're going to have to bear in mind that last year we were at eight million and forty, and um, we're currently projected just a, basically the override two hundred thousand dollars. Cat, you captured that correctly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you get a copy of that? Sorry. No. Uh, so our our revenues will. Continue our revenue forecasting will continue to tighten after you know, the house one is in right now. Mm -hmm. We'll meet with a financial team and, and see what makes sense for local receipts, etc. Moving forward, but we always we have historically taken that conservative approach. And right now, the only difference seems to be uh, the value of the override and the two and a half. There's, there's no no new surprises here, but it's important to start talking about that revenue side. And Playing a conservative has helped us out. Yeah, so. exactly. We know we have certified free cash, and we know that it's important to bear in mind the certified free cash formula is such that, I'm sorry, the free cash usage formula that has been incorporated in the last almost 10 years now, half dozen at least, um, has given us opportunity to move free cash forward, to fund the operating budget, and then to put in some measure of reserves, whether it's stabilization or capital stabilization. That, that formula, we still have an active discussion about what do we do with the percentage that was going to capital stabilization, and do we incorporate OPEB into that? That's important to bear in mind as we go forward. I think OPEB is going to be a, a continue to be a, a pressure point for revenues. Yeah. 
and um, we had our certified free cash. And it's interesting that you know we're supposed to be at you know five ish percent, and you kind of fall over when you look at half a million dollars of certified free cash. But we're also talking about an eight million dollar budget. Right. We're not that far off of the standard the uh, percentage thing. formulas. We you know we we, we who have been in the budget business long enough think about one hundred eighty five to two hundred twenty five thousand dollars. That was so fifteen years ago. That's not this year. Right. Things have changed a little right. bit. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the update. Uh, this is a qu quick question. That uh, do you want to do you want to just note that? I uh, yeah, I just noted that the um, third line down, general government and AA and education are dropping year over year. Yeah, that's our contribution from the state and the form of the cherry sheet. So yeah, that's 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 the the general shift of the state government revenue redistribution to small cities and towns. We get a little less every year, and it falls on us. Our estimates the, the, are based the, on three-year <laughs> averages. Okay. Too. Yeah. So if you look at the governors, it's a little bit different, but we usually fall in line pretty good at at the right. end when final budgets come out. The, the one problem you'll find when you when you you start looking at numbers is that it's a you 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 become um, concerned at what comes from the state right, right. And, well, and, and and in, and in my opinion when you look at education you really get you know if you look at from what if you go back to 1993 mm -hmm. compared to now with percentage of what the state Mm -hmm. supported local education to what it supports now by percentage yeah by percentage yeah. Right. You'd, be, you'd be amazed you'd be, you'd be dis you'd be disheartened Saddened. but yeah. no well it, I just I just think it's 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 different and right now Sunderland has kind of a growing school population mm -hmm. um, and a lot of our surrounding communities have declining school population. Right. They get they get hit worse than we do. Right. I mean, this, the trend is increasing year over year, and this is year this year it's down mm -hmm. yeah. for the first time in well seven don't, years. Don't, don't also forget, we're not going to forget also there's that um, what we're States. looking at now is what they call House One, eight and House One is from from the governor. Right. Typically, our elected state representatives and senators understand the pressures that the local communities are under, a little, right. and they they usually will. So you're looking at the final numbers the past year. You're not comparing house ones. So right. Right. our our, lo our local legislators, it's very important that we talk to them. You know, Natalie, if mm -hmm. you're watching, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Joe Comfort, if you're watching. Mm -hmm. um, but every time we talk to them, we we and 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 just just re looking at uh, Senator Comerford's uh, web page, she very much so understands the challenges that are faced with local inside. education yep. funding, not just secondary education, but um, higher education as well. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a if I could uh, follow down to the section under capital expense what's called out of budget expenditures state assessments you look at the cherry sheet offsets other amounts to be raised and then um i'm sorry state assessments and cherry sheet offsets over the last same period that's that's the other side of the formula with the state's assessment for things like pbta mm -hmm. lack of pilot money etc so we may have an increase on the top side which is the general revenue income yeah. but this is the part where they ding us on on the on the, uh, the other, on the other yeah, so we yeah. so it nets out as i was going to say and it yeah, nets out as this really funny point, little like less. weird little line so yeah. don't get no, used great. to that number being there yeah right <laughs> the, the red line the red numbers never really change much it just kind of tick up a little bit but yep. anyway i digress okay Great observation. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Are uh, you also guys? Yeah. Thank you. I wanted to just make sure we start talking about the revenues sooner rather than later. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Elliot. Thanks. Thanks. Next week. Yes. Thank you. Okay.
I speak as EMS and senior. Um, Ellie, just so you know, also is that we received a um, an email today from the uh, fire chief, and it seems that the fire, the state fire marshal, has basically confirmed that they will not need to uh, do the full physicals. Awesome. So he, Good. it appears that Steve Steve says that they will not using those be revenue. using that six thousand dollars we voted the other day at in at the uh, special town meeting. Okay. Cool. That's great to hear. Thank you. Okie dokie. Um, minutes from uh, one January 22nd. Motion on those. You have a motion made? I'll second. And seconded to accept as published the minutes of uh, January 22nd. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Next up is the uh, old business board of selectmen updates. Scott, David, David. Uh, had our first <coughs> meeting with the uh, union thirty eight on the negotiation stuff. Just for the um, IAs, though, so that was our first actual meeting on that. So we've uh, basically all handed each other our amendments to the the contract, and you know we'll, we'll see what uh, the what rules of engagement are set. Right? Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then we scheduled out a few more meetings for that because we're <coughs> trying to stack them like we usually do. But um, okay. So that'll be going along. And then how, uh, how about the ditches? Well, that's what I'm getting to next. We we need to schedule a our first ditch committee meeting and a personnel committee meeting. I'm waiting to hear back from the consultant. They were from just uh, okay. Yeah, putting the final numbers together. So as soon as I hear with. Okay. I, I had a, a mental thought while I was on my, one of my commutes, too. Like, if we don't hear back in time to figure out, you know, because we're going to have to come up with some kind of thing. But I can, you know, we can, we can talk about it. Um, and then the ditch committee, we are going to have to schedule our first. Do we, do we have a, have you got a list of everybody now in their I contacts? Do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want me to send it to you, David, or do you have a date in mind? Um, I'll look at the calendar, and then um, maybe we can do something. I'm looking to see. I might have a I might have a negotiation meeting next week, but let's see. Capital on Tuesday. Yeah, next week? I'll take a look at the thing, and then because uh, I want to make sure too that. Uh, I, I kind of want to send out like a little suggested agenda and make sure that people come prepared having read, um, you know, that report if they can, because it's a good baseline to start from, so. Do you want me to post a capital meeting, Scott? Mm. It's in concert with the planning. Okay. I was just putting that list of yeah. all the <laughs> it's coming, requests right? together. Yeah. Yeah. It just dawned on me like, oh yeah, I think that's next Tuesday's planning. But anyway, okay. regardless. I'll, I'll double check. Actually, I know it's farther down. We have an appointment to the personnel committee. There you go. So. Dude. All set? Yeah. yeah. Scotty? Uh, Mr. Chair, we're down to our last two scheduled meetings at the Frontier for both groups. We're, we're, um, <clears throat> There are um, monies on the table from both sides, and both sides are canoodling over them, and we head into our next meeting. Our next the canoodling meeting. period. Yeah, it's the canoodling yeah. period. Um, and I believe our next meeting is uh, 2.20 for uh, Frontier, but I can double check my calendar. And I would, I would characterize those negotiations as being as being um, professionally pleasant, no animus. Good. That's always helpful. Right. Anything else, Scotty? No. Uh, capital planning, I, it goes in concert with the planning board because two members of the planning board on that committee. Yep. I think it's the second Tuesday, which will be next week, but it'll be our first pass at a global capital request. Okay, good. Um, 
The uh, Senior Center Board of Oversight has a meeting tomorrow at 5 o'clock over in Deerfield. We're going to talk about bats. Bats? Nice. Yeah, not baseball Hibernate bats. New, hibernating bats. Got to keep okay. them hibernating. We're going to talk about hibernating bats and yeah. um, some other good stuff. Um, and our next South County EMS is scheduled for the latter part of February, in February 20-something. Um, that's being finalized right now. So we're progressing on that. Um, the, we did receive an email today from the Franklin County Tech. They, they're what they call an e and um, if they've Kesh. been through auditors and they will be reimbursing the town of Sunderland to $29,985. Is it the town of Sunderland or all of the towns? No, it's the, I thought it was all the, the towns. Unencumbered funds certified above in excess of 5% of the operating budget and budgeted capital for your, oh, for your district, this amount right. equals 29000 So what they do is they, we'll get a percentage of that. they um, return the 29th almost thirty thousand dollars they divide the it across right. so we'll get a couple dollars off right that. right yeah. we get 224 bucks yeah um <laughs> earlier we talked about firefighter physicals steven had gotten some information steve uh, benjamin so we're all set with that um so we're progressing sherry um uh, nothing new i've just been working on revenues and putting budget numbers together so. okay That's anything it. else yeah. um, old business I'd like to go to old business also about mm -hmm. the uh, treasurer Correct. collector position yeah. yep. and uh, Scott where do we want where are we gonna stand with that I think mr. chair if I could make the recommendation uh, based on conversations with the interview team uh, to extend the offer to uh, Heather Davis uh, based on the constructive contractual agreements. Okay. See if we can get uh, Ms. Davis started as early as possible, knowing that our treasurer, existing treasurer collector uh, is both retiring, but also that Ms. Davis as well uh, as Ms. Zierski, um each had strengths in one half of what we have as a combined position. Right. And and it, it, it's, it's important to bear in mind that we have a combined treasurer and collector. And um, based on our discussions, uh, Ms. Davis uh, seems to, um, Ms. Davis is being recommended. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and seconded. Any of those further discussion? I, I think we have a, an opportunity that uh, doesn't present itself very no. often. No, we it's have, not a lot of turnover. We have a collector treasurer that, that has announced her retirement well in advance. It gives us an opportunity yep. to get some yep. some training done. Yep. Um, and you're very difficult to find someone just to plug in to okay. financial, especially municipal f finances. Oh, correct. Um, so I would say if you're a young person looking for a, a career, look no further Good than municipal finances. <laughs> if, you, if you like to deal with numbers, because collector, treasurer, accountant, mm -hmm. those are all things that, that are tough to find right. um, replacements for. So, um, all right, so we have a motion made and seconded for the position of collector treasurer to offer the position to Heather Davis contingent upon um, Sherry has to do all the background checks and all that kind of stuff. The person needs to be able to be bonded and blah, blah, blah. There's a, a litany of stuff. Sherry will take care of that stuff. So all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 So we have a 3-0 vote for the appointment of Heather Davis as a treasurer collector. And Sherry, if you could start the uh, conversation with her. Next up is we have a, a, a request for appointment to the personnel committee. 
Uh, we have correspondent here. May this this serve as notice of my interest to serve in the personnel committee uh, from Mike Wozniakiewicz, and his contact information is attached. Okay, I'll uh, entertain a motion for Mike Wozniakiewicz to the personnel committee. Uh, motion. Second. I have a motion made and seconded to uh, appoint Michael Wozniakiewicz. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Three zero to Michael. Congratulations, Michael. But if he shows up on one of those cool go green golf carts, then you know, <laughs> can't have it. <laughs> Good point. Uh, we have a couple requests from the highway superintendent, George Emery. First is um, FY19 snow and ice wage account has been expended to. We had budgeted 14,000. There's 10,319 to date. Plus, there's uh, some other that's going to be. George is requesting that it's increased to seven. I mean, to 15. I'm wondering, should we just make that 17.5, Scott? Uh, he's asking to spend 15 in excess of the appropriation. Yeah. Yep. Seven. Uh, I think 17.5 makes sense, Mr. Chair, as well as $10,000 request for. Uh, snow and ice expense, which is essentially material and some fuels. Correct. That's that's ten. I would suggest we make that fifteen. I agree. Also, I, and, and again, I and and why I say that there, there's a couple reasons why I say it. A George has been our highway superintendent for a number of years. Um, he's ve he's very he's very um, cautious right. when he uses, right. and we have not. And we still, even though we go to 17.5, we are still um, watching that. That we we this is as the selectmen, yeah. we we look at everything that's done. So, so we have a pretty good idea. So we're requesting, we're looking for a motion mm -hmm. to increase mm -hmm. the snow and ice wages account to allow the highway superintendent to expend. To seventeen five mm -hmm. in excess, and fifteen thousand for the snow and ice for the um, expense line. Expense line. So moved. Second. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We have a three zero vote on that, Sherry, on those two lines. Okay. And and for people who are watching and paying attention, this is uh, a cap. And that cap, if it goes beyond, is the same format. It comes back in the form of a request. Yep. Right. And it's only the 4th of February, so we don't know what's going. Frankly, it's not a green light to run off and go spending. No. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> okay, the FERCOG District uh, Local Technical Assistant Program. Um, I thought I gave you mine. We're just looking for your... Top five. I'll, t I'll, uh, I'll text that tomorrow to you. I mean, yeah, I put mine down. Sorry. Okay. There they are. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll scan it too. tomorrow yep. and send okay. it. Okay. Yeah, Phoebe called me today to remind Phoebe? Yeah, oh. <laughs> All right. Um, caucus warrant. Mr. Clerk, you want to read the sure. caucus warrant? Uh, 2000, caucus 2019, caucus in compliance with Mass General Law, Chapter 53, Section 117 and 118, to the inhabitants of the town of Sunderland. A citizen's caucus will be held March 4th, 2019, 6.30 p.m. at the Sunderland town offices. Wendy Houle, town clerk, will call the caucus to order until a chairman is chosen. The purpose of the caucus is to nominate for the following town elective officers. Assessor, one position for three years. Board of Health, one position for three years. Library trustees, three positions for three years. Moderator, one position for one year. Planning Board, one position for one year. Oop, I think I got that wrong. My apologies. That Planning Board is one position for five years. Yep. And a Riverside Cemetery trustee, one position for three years. Elementary School Committee, one position for three years. Regional Frontier Regional School Committee, one position for three years. Selectman, one position for three years. Town Clerk, one position for three years. Town Park Trustee, one position for three years. Again, that's March 4th, 2019 at 6.30 p.m. Okay. 
Uh, moves to post caucus. Second. We have a motion made and seconded to uh, host the caucus for March 4th, 2019 at 630 in this room, Sunnell Town offices. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Um, I think that's it. That is it. Anything else, Sherry? Nope. You all set? FCAT, what do we forget? No, I think I'm good. All right. I'm going to keep an eye. He's going to keep an eye on us. All right. I know. Well, hey. All right. So uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to, well, before I do that, I just want to thank everybody that came out to the uh, special town meeting, meeting last, last Monday. Yeah. It was a very, very nice turnout. We do have some work to do, especially on the, the uh, marijuana bylaws. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I don't, um, that, that'll be... Um, up on a, on the docket, uh, I would recommend if you do have any concerns to take it to the uh, the planning board, um, or you can come talk to us at any time. So board of selectmen. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. We have a motion made and second to adjourn. All those in favor, favor, please say by <laughs> saying aye. Aye.